I wanted to do this video because this exam is crucial. Of course, this is basically the end. Simulation session two is it. Because after this, you have course five that has no exam and you basically click through to get your transcripts. But it's crucial because if you fail, you'll have to do a retake and a reassessment, which is okay. But they say if you fail twice, you have to take the entire four days over again. Nobody wants that, so the stakes are a little bit higher. I do want you to know though that I have heard personally from facilitators during the simulation session two week that this exam does have an extremely high passing rate. Of course, with that being said, it's still commercial, it's still math, so we wanna make sure we finish strong. In this video, we'll go over two good examples of questions that you might see often throughout the exam, as well as what happens next once you've passed. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Callum Moore here. On this channel, I share information that we need to achieve real estate success. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. At any point during the video, check out the description below. I list links to what we discuss, all my recommendations, and how to contact me down there. Let's get into the video. Okay, so just quickly, this is what to expect with helpful strategies and examples on the Sims 2 exam, but I have separate videos that I'll link in the cards here that go over the week or weekend sessions, so check that out if you haven't already. Okay, so everything on the Sims 2 exam is based off what you will learn in the three and a half days leading up to the exam. Of course, coming from course four, commercial real estate transactions, this will help a bit as Sims 2, of course, is also commercial. So I mentioned it in a previous video, but I'll quick mention it again. The exam is 46 questions. You can get 11 questions wrong and still pass with a 35 out of 46 and a 76% passing mark. You have three hours to complete the entire exam and keep in mind that majority of the questions are long worded scenario based questions. Three hours gives you a long time for 46 questions so be patient and take your time. Okay so we'll dive into the two examples of questions that you may see on the exam and after that I'll give you recommendations and some value of what's next. Just quickly though before we get into the first question which will be a math question I want you to know that this exam exam will have math formulas given to you. So there will be a new little pop-up window that will give you a few of the formulas needed to make the calculations and even a section as well to do the calculations. You will also be given a pop-up calculator as usual or in my case and I want you to double check this during the week with your facilitators but they allowed me to have an actual physical calculator as long as it wasn't my phone. Okay, so having the formulas is nice, of course, but knowing which formulas to use in which question is what we will have to determine. Okay, example question one. Mark is thinking about purchasing a small retail store in a strip mall as an investment property to eventually put up for lease. He wants to find out what the cap rate will be and asks his real estate agent, Mary, for advice. Mark has some information on the property which will help Mary determine the cap rate. The property is listed for $125,000 and it will be rented monthly for $1,300. Mark will be doing all of the maintenance and will also be the property manager but the monthly insurance will be $240 and has a monthly property tax bill of $260. What is the cap rate? Okay, so before we get into doing the math on this question, I want you to know that during this simulation session week, you will learn this. Don't stress, just consider this question and watching this video to be extra support and extra help in helping you pass the exam. Okay, so if we go to our formulas tab, we can see that we are determining cap rate. Perfect, so cap rate equals income divided by value. And one big thing that I want you to remember is that the income, the I, stands for net annual income. So we will need to be minusing some expenses, of course. What I did during the exam is I set it up like this. I put the value of the property up top, so 125,000. Under that, we'll put the monthly rent at 1,300. And under that, the monthly insurance and monthly property tax. Let's take our rent and minus the monthly operating expenses of insurance and property tax, giving us a monthly net operating income of $800. Okay, so remember that monthly is something to quick look out for here because we of course need annual. So let's take that $800, multiply it by 12 to give us an annual net income of 9,600. Okay, great. So we now have both pieces needed for this formula. Let's just plug them in. Cap rate equals net income divided by value. So 9,600 divided by 125,000 gives us a cap rate 
of 7.68%. Try to remember some key takeaways from this question. The I in that formula represents net annual income and that operating expenses need to be taken into consideration. Okay, so we know the answer is 7.68% cap rate, but this answer right here actually, and I did it on purpose, I want you to look out for. So this answer is if you didn't multiply the net monthly income by 12 to get the annual income. 0.64% cap rate. They might do a few tricky things where a possible wrong calculation you have made could lead you to an answer that does exist as an option. So look out for that. The process of elimination and having multiple choice is an advantage to us. Let's not let it work against us. Let's move on to example question two. Sarah is a salesperson that works at a local commercial brokerage that deals with all types of commercial properties, including retail, industrial, development, land, leasing, and office properties. Sarah has been referred a buyer who is looking to purchase a small office building. Which of the following would not be an important factor when choosing an office property for your client? If you've seen my other videos, I again wanted to make the second question one of these not questions that we're gonna see because we do see them quite often. I'll put the video up in the cards here of exactly how I handled not questions during the exams. But possible answers to this question are A, parking, B, multiple loading docks, C, telecommunication system, and D, energy efficiency. So I suggest doing this as well. If you're moving through the exam and an answer clearly pops out at you, I always just keep the mouse hovered over that answer. I know you have a lot of time on these exams, but a good percentage of the time, your first thought is going to be the right thought. And in this case, having multiple loading docks in an office building doesn't seem necessary and it is more of a quality you would look for in an industrial building. What would not be an important factor when choosing an office property? Multiple loading docks would not be an important factor. Okay, so those are two good examples of questions you're going to see on the Sims 2 exam. In a previous video I just did for the Sims 1 exam, I talk about what I did and didn't do in preparation leading up to the exam. So check that out if you haven't yet because it's the same preparation. But to change it up and provide value, I want you to reach out to me if you have any questions about what to do next. You are now at the very end. You are one question away from finishing this beast of a program. And if you haven't already, you gotta start figuring out information on which brokerage you wanna work with. If you know my story, in late 2017, I was in a real estate partnership where we were 50-50, and by early 2018, I started comparing every single brokerage business model. Mainly because what we were paying in desk fees and splits was extremely concerning, and most of all, the value that they provided just wasn't there. I consider myself to be a forever learning student, so I'm always learning and watching to see what's happening in the industry and what's changing. So contact me if you have any questions at all on any brokerage, and of course, if you're interested in joining and finding out what we're doing at eXp Realty. You can book a call with me, it's in the description below, or just DM, email, comment on this video, I get back to everyone. If that's for you, I'll talk to you soon. If not, I really hope this video helped. You're right at the end there. It's just time to finish strong. Again, my name's Callum Moore, eXp Realty Agent here in Ontario. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.